Hi, my name is Ed Lupton and I want to welcome you to another of my Discover Living videos. On this video, we're going to talk about change in greater depth. If you remember seeing on my last video, the process of change, where a thought affects your body, creates intuition and hunches, resulting in intentions to do or not to do, resulting in a belief system that can turn into an experience and those experiences can change into what we call habits or something that's really a part of your everyday life. And if we take a habit to an extreme, you'll have what we call an addiction. An addiction could create an imbalance and this is something of course that we would not recommend. But our body is really built to learn. Our mind is always gravitating towards that which it is focusing on. And this is especially true in the early years of a child's life. Those first seven years of an infant are so critical in their, their growth into a, a real person. And the parents play a very critical part as role models for those infant children. And the, the environment, of course, plays another critical role. In the beginning, that child is taking in all this information every second of their waking hours and they're learning so much and they don't know anything about failure. That's why when they fall, they'll always get up and they'll keep trying and trying until that day that they're able to walk. And it's true with everything during this seven year period of time that they don't know anything about failure. But when they do go to school, what happens? They're put against another child in the form of testing and competing and suddenly for the first time that child learns failure. And also during the same period of time from parents that child is learning the word no. So suddenly barriers are being built in that child's life for the first time. And what happens as that child is in their teenage years, they're doing what? They're developing a comfort system. This comfort system is basically allowing them to be accepted in their group. So they'll dress alike, they'll act alike, and they'll talk alike. And you see this amongst so many t uh, teenagers saying, acting, and doing all the same thing. And then you have a smaller group that'll just take it to the other extreme and they'll have the, the crazy hairdo, the, maybe the piercings and, and uh, tattoos just to set themselves apart from, from the others so that they can be something special. But as they develop into adulthood and in, in, into the 20s, the frontal part of their brain develops and they develop their own individual personality and they see what they were doing before and they'll move out of that comfort zone into something special. But the pressures of life can get at us and as you know, most of us have developed our comfort zones where we're in a situation and, and we don't know how to get out of it. And that's the purpose of these videos is to help you through making everything more simplistic and, and helping you develop a new way of living. I remember myself at the age of five going on a church picnic during the summertime and they had a race. There must have been 50 kids in this race. And I made it a point to myself that I was going to win this race. And I don't think any child that was in this race was focusing on winning as much as I was. And I did win that race because I wanted to win that model airplane. And I remember my grandfather during that period of time telling me, uh, sitting me down on the couch almost on a weekly basis after I would mow his lawn, he would say, Ed, just remember you're a leptin. So I grew up thinking I was different from everybody else. And I didn't know any better at that time that I had to be something special. I was special. And this forced me unconsciously to push myself to higher, higher levels. And it wasn't until I was around 10 or 12 years of age, I realized, hey, I'm no different from anybody else. But I, a habit that had already been instilled in me to excel, try to do better than everybody else around me which led me into sports and student government, etc. So we have this inner ability inside of us. It's just waiting to come out. 
And that's the purpose of these videos, to move everything down into more a simple way of understanding and then move out of our comfort zones into something special. I remember when I was young, I had friends who could whistle real loud and I really envied them. And so I wanted to whistle real loud just like them. And it was a Friday afternoon. I remember putting fingers in my mouth and blowing air. And I blew air for two days. And I blew air so much that my lips got chapped because of all the times I was trying and nothing was happening other than air coming out of my mouth. And then on Sunday afternoon, a sound came out of my mouth. And I kept adjusting my fingers and my tongue until sun Sunday evening, I learned how to whistle. And it was very good. To the point where all I had to do is stick my fingers in my mouth and this loud sound would come out. We're only two days before, I could only blow air. And this can happen to anybody who focuses on what they want to do to make a change in their life. Later on in my life, I was operating a 48-bed care home, uh, taking care of elderly people, and we were involved in a flood situation where I had to evacuate all 48 these, of these people for uh, eight days. And in the aftermath, we lost 17 of our 48 people because of the trauma of the floods. And I became an activist after that for change because the county had a change and the state had a change because each was not prepared for a evacuation or a, a disaster of that magnitude where uh, actual counties were being evacuated which created a very hard situation on people with disabilities and the elderly. And because of me calling all these government officials on the county level and on the state level, I was asked eventually if I was interested in teaching a course in emergency planning for administrators of facilities. And I did this for several years throughout the state of California. And then I was asked to go back to Washington, D.C to teach a class to agencies from across the country in emergency planning for people with disabilities and the elderly. And here only three years before, I didn't know that much about emergency planning at all. But I focus, I learn, and I read. I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you read one book a month in the same subject matter, within a few years you're going to become an expert in that area. And that's what happened to me. I focused on one area and I learned everything I could about it. And it was really ironic. I had no schooling in emergency planning in this little niche. But through my involvement for change, I created change in myself and also a lot of other people. And you can do the same thing in your life. Another critical part in this change process is the significance of words. Now you will Expand your ability to change based on the size of your vocabulary. You will learn that much easier as your vocabulary expands. This is true for young people as well as older people. It's a learning process that can begin or expand it at any age. And I encourage you to talk to your children about that and also work on it as yourself. Because as you are being spoken to, your ability to understand is greatly improved when you know more words. And you'll be able to relate back, give feedback to another person based on your ability to speak words. So the learning process accelerates as your vocabulary accelerates as well. And it's very important. Now the changes could be in many different facets of your life. I used to be a professional baseball player several years ago. And I remember Living in San Diego, I became friends of Ozzie Smith. If, if you know baseball, you know that Ozzie Smith is a Hall of Fame baseball player as a shortstop for the San Diego Padres and also the Sandy, uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Well, I knew Ozzie when he was just starting out with San Diego. And I remember Ozzie telling me how, as a youth, he would throw a ball against the wall and that ball would ricochet back to him and he would throw it with greater intensities and different angles causing him to react very quickly. And it was, as a result of doing that, he had the fantastic ability to react to a baseball wherever it was and make unbelievable plays that other players could not make. 
And that's why they used to call him the wizard, Ozzy the Wizard of Oz. And he became an unbelievable, fantastic shortstop. I also remember going with him uh, where he had a friend that was working with him on his hitting. He was not a great hitter while he played in San Diego. And through his repetition, working on his stance and his ability to change his, his hitting, of, hitting the baseball, he developed into a pretty good hitter over a career. And so everybody has this innate ability to change if you focus on it, if you think about it and you work on it to the point where it becomes a habit and the experience and it becomes part of you. We all have this ability. And that's why I encourage you to do what I have done, what other people have done. It, it could be in, in sports, it could be in just intellectual activities, it could be playing a musical instrument. Whatever it is, you have the ability to make changes in your life. So I encourage you to expand your comfort zone. Get out of your chair. Okay. You need greater meaning, purpose, and fulfillment in your life if it's lacking. So the only way to do that is to expand out of your comfort zone to create these changes. And this is what I want to help you do with your life. And these start out with affirmations, where we took uh, words that we want to use to help change our life and put them into sentence uh, affirmations where we are actually doing the change. And let me show you what I have created for myself. This is a paper filled with affirmations for me. And let me just read a few of them to you. I have complete and trust in God. All my needs are being met. I like, I like people and radiate warmth and friendship to all. I let myself play and have fun. I'm becoming a success. I can do and have anything I want. I'm becoming more positive. I live every day with power and passion. It's fun and easy to take action towards my goals. Every cell is vibrating more each day with health and vitality and love. I give and receive love freely. I'm attracted to relationships that are open. I think clearly. My mind always thinks of healthy ways of living. I'm learning things more quickly. I'm becoming debt free. My mind is becoming more clear each day. And on and on and on. If any of you want a copy of these affirmations that I use, you, you can go to my Discover Living website and you'll find my email there and just email me and I'll email them to you just to get you started on those affirmations. These affirmations now are being put on tape so that I'll be giving them. I won't have to say them. They're going to be given back to me uh, in the form of actually subliminal information. So this is something that I'm going to talk about on another video that's going to be open to you where I'm actually expanding my comfort zone through a special way. I have some goals in my life, my changes. Believe it or not, I want to learn how to play the tin whistle, which is an Irish flute. I also want to learn how to photo read. And I don't know if you're aware or not, but you have been taught to read one word at a time. And if you take speed reading classes, you'll learn how to read a few words or several words at one time to accelerate your reading process. But whether you're aware of it or not, when you open the page of a book, your subconscious actually sees that whole page. And it's just a question of you accessing that information that is in your subconscious. And photo reading teaches you how to do that, where your comprehension level goes up and you're able to read phenomenally fast. And thousands of people around the world are doing this. And this is one of the changes I want to do for me. I will talk about that probably at a later video as well. So we have this innate ability to change. So I encourage you to start this process for yourself. Make that list I talked about on that last, last video. Whatever it is, come out and, and choose five changes and, and prioritize them. And let's start with one. It can be an easy one, easy one like I did where I was trying to learn how to whistle loud. So start this process process of change and it, it is starting the process for you to discover a better way of living.